Boom. Look at the wallpaper. Hello. Oh, wow. This is exclusive old school wallpaper. Because I think a few of the characters are unrepresented and or changed, eh? And improved. Improved. It's kinda rough. They're all they're all improved. Yeah, but some of them are some are cool, but we decided uh I thought we were gonna introduce ourselves. We are. Okay, welcome to the stream, everybody. Um, <laughs> this is the darkest dungeoning stream. Cool, the title actually worked this time. Um and today, lots of exclusive Tyler fights info. So on the stream, we have uh, me, Tyler. I'll be doing the fighting. And I'm the designer of the game. Uh, well, one of the... I help with the design. Chris also designs. <laughs> uh, what about you guys? Uh, I'm Chris. I'm uh, the artist and designer light. Chatter designer. I just get to talk about stuff and then Tyler has to make it fun. He's a self-styled dabbler. Yeah. I'm Kier, I'm programming and answering or logging your questions. So if you have questions, type them in the chat. There's always I'm room Brooks. on the question bus. And that's Brooks. Bro Here comes Brooks. I'm Brooks. Hi, I'm Brooks. <laughs> I'm Brooks. I'm the animator, uh, technical artist, and um, I'm going to say suggestioner. <laughs> that's oh, <awesome>. wow. That's <laughs> pretentious. Well <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah. It's I also, make lots of suggestions. It's also good he he saves that to spring on us during the the call so that we have to just go with it. That's right. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it is actually. Brooks, I guess, like a lot of us, Brooks Brooks still has an active role playing uh, career on the side, and so um, it's great to get your ideas from that probably are inspired by your weekly sessions or whatever. Um, all right, so today. Uh, here we go. We're going to show some random combat uh, stuff. And just the disclaimer, I would say, is you're going to see lots of work in progress things. So not everything is animated. Not everything has sounds. Um, in fact, Nothing has effects. Yeah. No, like, no effects. I'm always cagey about this stuff because I have to think about presentation. So I hate showing, like, stuff that isn't all done and awesome. But that's yeah. the way things need to be nowadays, apparently. So I'm trying to roll with it. But, yeah. <laughs> All the kids. It's gonna be a little rough, please. You know, we haven't sanded or varnished this shit, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. There's gonna be unanimated characters in this, and or slightly animated characters, possibly. Yeah, so. We're all very self-conscious, obviously. Yes. yes. <laughs> but we're trying to do, you know, this new internet age where, when you have a thought, you start streaming it immediately. So we're trying to just go with that. <laughs> um, Burger, so good. But so, cool so what, are we, what are we showing today? So today, yeah. uh, what I thought I'd start out showing actually is dun, 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 um, a couple cool things. First of all, we're going to let you have your first glance at four new heroes. Um, heroes that I don't think we've shown in any release footage yet. And uh, so we've got the Hellion. Uh, the, ooh, and this is already starting off with a bang here. Um, so we've got the Hellion. She's in front there. She's kind of like a barbarian, Pictish-inspired uh, savage-type warrior. And then we've got the Bounty Hunter, who is uh, pretty much, yeah, he's a stone-cold killer. Um, it's like a Boba Fett slash Batman kind of guy. Gosh, Boba Fett and Batman. So that pretty much automatically qualifies him as the coolest character ever possible in the game. <laughs> he's the best character in the game, um, and I'm going to change all the damage metrics before we ship so that he's the best. Right. And the only name you can assign to him is Chris. Or Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Bruce Wayne. <laughs> Either one works. Uh, then we've got the Grave Robber, who we've, we've talked a lot. Um, we've talked about a lot in various discussions because it seems like every mechanic traces its way back to the Grave Robber. Like, well, when the Grave Robber is leading, she can disarm traps. And when the Grave Robber... So anyway, we finally made a Grave Robber, so that's cool. Um, she's got a bunch of cool skills, which we'll get to. And then, uh, lastly but not least, is the um, the occultist, who is really good thematically tied into everything we're doing. We uh, got some questions. Okay, well, um, hold the question just one sec as we show here. And then uh, you can also see we're fighting some cultists. So uh, the cultists are in service to basically these other nasty powers that uh, that are corrupting your entire estate. And as such, you can kind of find the cultists cruising around in many of the different dungeons, grouping up with weird monsters and just doing their cultish things. Yeah, like, they're kind of the sort of... Um, ...facilitating the entire awful affair and 
putting Pigman in touch with necromancers and just making sure everything runs smoothly for the apocalypse. Yeah, so without further ado, I'm going to jump in here too with... Uh, we've talked a lot and you've seen little bits of maybe movement skills like in other combat videos where like the skeleton defender bashes somebody and then they get moved backwards. And we're going to show some cool stuff today about how that movement really impacts combat. So for example, um, the grave robber here has a pretty awesome skill where she can leap forward and do quite a lot of damage with a high crit. But um, to do it, she needs to be in the back rows. And then as you'll see here, it has ooh, a potential downside in that um, she leaps to the front, which does expose her to uh, some attacks. But on the good side, she just did a whole bunch of damage. So where is she in relation to, say, like the Highwayman as far as like her general armor and damage potential? Just so that we have an understanding of like what we're dealing with here, you know, relative to the guys that maybe people are more familiar with. Yeah, I would say she's like um, similar in that she's not super highly protected. She's more like um, harder to hit. And then, um, but like she doesn't have quite as many versatile damaging attacks, but she does have the potential to land some big blows. Um, when she has a chance, so. So she's kind of like bob and weave, and then you hope yeah. for that one big kind of get a, a really big hit in. Okay. Yeah, and like the Highwayman has, you know, you can kind of spec him to be a little bit uh, front rank, you know, with the point blank shot and stuff like that. Whereas she, she really doesn't have that. Like she's, her her time in the front rank should really be restricted to just like after a turn. lunging and then trying to get the hell out. Yeah, she's like bouncing around everywhere. That's cool. Okay, here I think the female cultist... Okay, yeah, we've, we've got some action going on here. So um, the cultist witch has just done an eldritch push on the hellion. And now this has messed up everything we're doing because uh, it pushed the hellion all the way to the back. And she is not made to be in the back. She is made to be in the front. Oh, you're fucked now. Messing people's business up. Uh, but fortunately, we can actually do the same thing to the enemies here. The bounty hunter, one of his coolest skills is crowd control type stuff. So let's see if we can make it work. Ah, so turnabout is fair play. Well, she's clearly not... Um, Hellion's clearly not made for back rank attacking. In this case, actually, the four skills that we have mapped in, none of them, none of them actually work um, from the back rank. And by the way, for those of you that may not have seen some of this stuff before, um, I'm going to hover over the skill for a minute. You'll see that like the red pips show you where she needs to be. Like um, On the left side, it shows you what rank she needs to be in to launch the skill. And then on the right side are where she can attack. So as you'll see here, pretty much all her skills involve being closer than the back row. So we're going to move her up. But you waste the turn for damage. Yeah. All right. Um, well, now at least we've sort of messed up that, um, that witch with the bounty hunter. So... Uh, Maybe I'm going to make it even worse and see if we can't uppercut this guy back. Aha! And now she's in the front. I wish we had effects. I'm going to say that. <laughs> It'll... It's the last time. It adds so much, <laughs> and it's like I'm like cringing watching this. Oh, I think it looks... It looks. I think it still looks pretty cool. I think they'll. I think. I think the bounty hunter actually has effects for his marking and is. Oh, you're right. Like, yeah. Is swipes, but that's it. No, none of the other three characters, and obviously the occultist or sorry, cultists, um, have effects, and the cultists clearly don't have animation either. Yeah, I mean, yeah. We're, we're showing. You know, like the artists are gonna wince at this stuff, but um, you guys yeah, have yeah. seen some of our other stuff, and you know that. I mean, without sounding too overconfident, I mean, we're going to polish it up a lot. But we thought you'd really get a kick out of seeing some of the mechanics. So the um, the Grave Robber, this is a really cool companion skill to that lunge that I did a few minutes ago. Um, this Shadow Fade is made for basically a, a retreat, but it's kind of like a tactical retreat instead of just moving. Like, I could do the move skill, and she can jump back two squares right away. But if I do the Shadow Fade, the nice benefit is I can potentially stun a guy, and it gives me a defensive debuff. Um, which is something we haven't really shown too much of before. So I'm going to see if I can't get lucky. Stun the... Oh, I even got a killing blow. Um, took care of him and then actually moved back at the same time. So that was pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Weakening Curse. These brawlers haven't done much yet, but they can do actually a fair amount of damage and some serious crit potential. So I'm going to... We're getting lots of crits today. It's like crit central. Do you modify the crits for this demo? All crit all the time. No, actually, I didn't, and or at least I don't remember doing so. So, for the next fight, you should take the torch down. 
Yeah. Just get crit crazy. You could do that mid fight with some debug keys if you want. Ah, I could actually the the old T plus T minus. Um, okay, let's see. So this is actually going pretty well. Um, which you know what? I'm not going to demonstrate this part of the bounty hunter thing yet because I'll do it with a um, with a different a different monster just to show it. But everybody's in pretty good shape, so we can do some attacking. The occultist is pretty cool. Um, I'll show him some of his other skills coming up, but he's kind of an alternative to the Vestal. He does have some healing skills, but um, he also has some pretty good damaging stuff. Yeah, the thing with him we wanted to do is he's kind of almost tapped into all the bad power that's circulating around everywhere, but he can't totally control it. So there's, you know, he's got some kind of, he can fumble the ball basically. So he'll go to heal you and he'll heal you for some damage and then give you like a bleed effect or something. Cause it just, you know, he got the words wrong and he, he's starting to lose his, his head a little bit. Right. Um, okay. So now I'm going to boot into a different battle. So um, forgive me for a second as I close the game down. Um, Kier, this would be a perfect time for the question bus. Well, it's it's packed full of questions. <laughs> Let's uh, rip through them. Let's do it. So, Depression Core is back again. He was here last week and he had a question. Um, when are you guys planning to show us more of the Hamlet? Hamlet is going to be our sort of big... Um, I mean, hopefully we, we get to go to, to PAX Primer or whatever, but that's going to be... Around about that time is going to be our big kind of reveal, like our sort of free... Um, you know, before we start really pushing for early access, um, we want to show off what that's going to look like. But we don't want to just, we want to wait until PAX, basically. Cool. And we're uh -oh. polishing it. Like, Kira's been working on it really steadily. Um, I'm just starting to, you know, add some, some nicer art here and there. And, and it is a lot of work, so we want to just make sure that it, it comes off well, as opposed to showing you what we have now, which Yeah, if we, sh if we showed you what we have right now, <laughs> even with all the disclaimers in the world, there would still be a little piece of you that would just go, yeah, a little eh. sadness, a little more sadness in the world. Yeah, but there's all those sweet drawings in all the buildings. It's true. <laughs> That's true. It is getting better by the day. Um, so here I'm stress testing the system. Uh, we've got a two-slot enemy. Um, we've got a rabid dog. We've got a crone. So you'll see there's a few things in terms of spacing that we need to sort out. But I thought I thought I'd just show you some of the mechanics because they're kind of cool. Um, let's see here. Well, a pick to the face is never a bad idea, except for when you miss. Um, so these enemies are actually from the forest. Uh, you won't see them in the in the ruined castle um, dungeon in the actual game. Um, so you can tell they're all sort of they have a little bit more of a woodsy theme to them. Right. And I think I'll wander around the forest a min in a minute instead of just jumping into a battle. Like, I'll start the forest up. But I kind of wanted to show some of these mechanics just because they're yeah. interesting. Um, okay, so here's a good example of, like, um, the cultist has some back row artillery here. He just calls in some sort of weird... We haven't done the effect yet, of course, but it'll be some sort of weird eldritch thing. And in this case, um, he's able to hit both of them because even though the giant is a two-slot, he actually is taking up slots two and three right now. And then he's able to hit the crone as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, Kira, more question while we're... Uh... Uh, Rio Bucks wants to know, what is the one, two uh, icons? Oh, That's yeah. All... Um, okay, so on those other things, basically, uh, we, we haven't drawn the attack icons for them yet, so they're just placeholder. Um, and this is just to remind us what skill slot it's in. So, for example, um, you, can, you can click on skills, but you can also use hotkeys. So, right now, I'm over the bounty hunter and... Uh, just to show here, I'm using hotkeys to switch between the skills. So those are just placeholder art. Um, okay. But on the subject of the bounty hunter, actually, I'm going to do one of his cool skills here. So this giant is a pretty big enemy. He's going to take some effort to take down. So we're going to mark him for death. And uh, what that does is that tags him and marks him. You can see the status icon. And now the bounty hunter has a companion skill that does more damage to a tagged enemy. Um, so that's kind of his way of, like, He's very good at crowd control, but also taking down really powerful enemies. He's less good at, say, like AOE and you know that kind of stuff. Are there are there any? And other he's not. He, oh, sorry, I just wanted to add. He's not bursty either. Like you have to set up his attacks either by using the the hook or or marking. So he can't come out of the gate real strong. We're also going to sorry, sorry, care weaken this giant. Um, 
Are there any other people that uh, do mark damage? Like, can you combo the yes bounty hunter with somebody else? Yeah, that's the idea. Like, um, some other some of the other classes would also have some tag. We it's like basically increased damage against a tagged or marked an enemy. So then you might be like, okay, I'm gonna make sure to take that skill with that character when I pair him with the bounty hunter. Okay, now we're back to the bounty hunter. This guy is tagged, so I'm going to take the collect bounty skill. Don't miss. Don't miss. I know. This is his, like, <laughs> the effect down there is tag killer, meaning he does extra damage to a tagged enemy. But, oh. Nice. Nice. That's big damage. Yeah, that's a solid hit right there. That's There's no question about it. Um, now, I could leap forward, but... <laughs> Brooks, that's awesome. Uh, yes. What did I... What? The thing you typed. There would be no oh. wanting tentacles. I'm going to try to take this By the time the game is in, yeah. Yeah. Now, um, oh yeah, now w the Hellion has a pretty awesome skill here. Um, you know, usually the front rank fighters are kind of restricted to fighting people in front of them, but she has this Iron Swan, which is basically a, a really effective way to take out a back row enemy that's messing up your business. So let's see if we can just... Yeah, land a hit on the crone. Well, I could have killed her, but didn't quite get it done. Ooh. I have a question about the uh, b um, Hellion. Okay, shoot. Uh, does she have a skill called If It Bleeds? And what is that? Yeah. She has an If It Bleeds skill, and I'll use it. So in the past, we've shown like the Plague Doctor and stuff like that, and she does like a Blight or a Poison attack. So we also have Bleeding in the game, uh, which is another dot or you know damage over time. So... Um, so the bleed is like some some creatures are really resistant to um, to poisons, but not to bleeds, and vice versa. So the hellion can do some uh, some bleeding, which will just kind of like do successive damage. Let's see here. Yes, go to the crone. That's pretty much her thing. She's like high damage, high bleeding. Um, she has like an adrenaline rush skill, which can she can shake off the effects of poison and bleeding to herself. Um, Oh, there we go. Nice. Yeah, she is. The bounty hunter is. He's living up to the name. All right. Um, looks like this. Now I should I should point out that we have four skills mapped in, but each hero actually has seven skills, and um, we're just bringing in four right now. And in the in town, what you can do is, you can pick which of which four of the seven. Assuming you've bought them all, which four of the seven to. Uh, carry in to the dungeon with you and that's part of the strategy when you're putting your party together um, yes yeah, so you can have like two highwaymen and one guy's all like point blank shot and then the other one's all sort of pistol shot and hangs around the back so let's see up. now I'm gonna boot back in and we're gonna actually wander around the wheel a little bit just to um, maybe show the effects of a couple battles in a row especially if we take some damage and I can show like the, the healing and stuff like that um, one, one thing of note as far as the wheel goes is right now all the curios are showing up in every dungeon. Yes. So you're not going to see Iron Maiden in the wheel. Probably. Oops. Yeah, so for a limited time only, you can see Iron Maidens in the wheel. It's today only. Oh, that's yeah. weird. Um, so, Brooks, <laughs> are you going to make that occultist skull candle flicker? Yes, I actually answered that in the chat. Um, yeah. We just don't have effects on any of these guys yet, but uh, yes, he will have a little candle flame that will flicker back and move back and forth a little bit. Mm. I have a, I guess I have a question. Do they archive our streams? Yeah, I believe so. So, so you, other people will be able to watch this later. Mm -hmm. They, so they do. I know it. this because my father watched the one I did on the animation. <laughs> <laughs> So, you yeah. proud of me now, Dad? Mm -hmm. You're gonna see props that are in our we're in the PAX demo, and that's just because um, yeah, we we don't have new props to show yet, but that's coming up soon. Um, but this is really mainly just to show some of the enemies, things like that. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, ye old spike trap, the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> Again, no spikes in the in the forest. No. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Oh, yeah, the old question mark pose. Oh, look at that. We hit the jackpot and we did nothing. Throw that throw that uh, cloak on. Oh, yeah, okay. You're crazy. Uh -oh. Too late naked, now. Naked Tyler over here. Here we go. <laughs> um, so the dogs are kind of funny. One thing they do is uh, they can cause you to bleed. They can give you rabies. 
and um, and not only that, but they keep every time they attack, they leap to the front. So just as you're trying to do damage to a dog, then it like might get shifted to the back, and then you can't hit it, and then it leaps forward again. So they're basically harassed. They're like a skirmish unit, you know. <laughs> They'll mess with you. Let's see. Ha ha. He's all about the crits today, man. He just does not mess around. Oh, so does that pull them two spaces forward, not to the front? Uh, yeah, that, that pull, uh, his come hither does two spaces. So she was in rank four. He was able to pull her up to... Um, cool. Pull her up two. And then that would affect, like, now she's forced to use this attack instead of her weakening curses that she can use in the back row. Mm -hmm. So as you get to know the monsters and start to learn the attacks they can do, uh, I think, you know, the obvious example we've given before is like, um, our, you know, if like the arbalist or artillery in the back, if you pull them to the front, they can't shoot their crossbows, but it'll be things, you know, other attacks too. And so you'll kind of learn like, wow, it's really helpful to get this enemy out of the front row, or it's really helpful to get this enemy into the front row. Yeah. You're going to want to knock some guys back so that they can't, you know, hit you in the face really hard. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, we're doing pretty good damage here already. Um, there's some questions around how the rounds work. Mm hmm I've noticed a few of them popping up. Um, basically, every character gets one action oh, per round. And then there's another round, and, and we go again. There's no mana. There's no cooldowns. It's just you choose the one thing for them to do um, that turn, and we just go around. At the beginning of each round, um, their speed stat determines uh, the, the play order. And yes, we're thinking about ways of indicating the round play order uh, on screen. Currently, it's not there, but that was one of the big pieces of feedback we had coming out of PAX. Sorry, yeah, one I, just of the, to, I just wanted to call that. One of the earlier questions we got asked was, did, did the round, does the round counter actually, um, is it there for a reason? Like, is there anything that'll happen after a specific amount of rounds into the fight? Um, Maybe in some fights. I mean, yeah, that's not, a good idea. Yeah, we've thought about that in terms of certain mechanics, like with bosses especially. Um, and I have thought about, like, somehow maybe rewarding you for efficiency so like if you're able to do certain fights really fast then that could be good um so it's definitely yeah, ground that, ground that we could explore or the torchlight actually a, that was actually a question somebody had was if you get better treasure if you finish the fight faster that's interesting yeah yeah that 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 would be something cool i think um but we know, currently don't have that but yeah it could tie into the torch it could be like if if a combat goes ten rounds, then you have to eat afterwards. You know there could be stuff like that, which could be cool. That's cool too, yeah. So, um, yeah, let's do the old shadow fate. Oh, jeez, they're all about the killing. Remember every wow. time I demo those first four characters, I can't hit to save my life, and uh, the old question mark. Missing art. Wow. Uh, okay, so yeah, this is this is a good example though. So let me go to the loot. Um, these are placeholder illos, but um, we have a concept of heirlooms, which are these like crests and portraits and deeds that you can gather. And then when you go to town, you actually use heirlooms um, to uh, to help upgrade town. And so um, I got some crests and deeds. So that's going to be exciting because uh, you know I'm, there might be certain buildings that require crests. Say, and now I'm like, oh, thank God, I got I needed those crests to upgrade the building. Uh, let's see. Uh, we got a request for you to do some camping. Some camping? Okay. From Depression Core. We do some camping. And we could also check if you gave him more than one camping skill each. Well, I did, but we'll see what pops in. I don't actually know what's mapped in for these characters. Who's to so... say? It's not a science game development. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's, <laughs> let's do some camping. Let's camp it up. But first, I feel like... Um, okay, yeah, that's fine. Let me camp it up. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> hey, everybody's missing hey, camping check out that poses. Art. Yeah, awesome camping guys poses. About getting a new artist. Uh, <laughs> so That's here, good. yeah, no, it's funny. <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is what it's like in the trenches of game development. Uh, so I can't eat a feast because I actually didn't bring enough rations in. So I could go ahead and eat some, or I can go half rations. Actually, it doesn't hurt me. It just doesn't heal any. Whereas a full ration. So full rations. This is the number here. That means like generally a full meal is one unit of rations per character. But let's say I had a character who's a glutton or somebody who's starving or fasting or whatever that could affect the number. Um, but let's go ahead and do a half. So it doesn't actually hurt me, but saves. Yeah, a but bit. the advantage of that is that although it 
you use up food which you purchased and there's no immediate gain, you get access to the rest points and the camping skills. So you can still do supplemental healing at this stage of camping too. Um, now, I haven't put in the proper camping skills for these four characters, so just for the record, they'll have awesome camping skills that are totally related to their classes. Um, but there's some generics in here. And for some reason, the highwayman skill seems like everybody gets right now. So <laughs> There'll also be uh, shared... Some like some cavy skills are shared between multiple classes. Right. So like the bounty hunter, actually, I think this makes sense that he has gallows humor. Um, okay, wound care. Not only does it heal a bit, but it has a chance to remove bleeding. And since three of us are bleeding right now, oh, um, it's pretty lucky. I didn't even notice that. Looks like the occultist is is hurt a bit. Even. So okay, well we healed him, but it didn't do the bleeding. And we'll eventually have better feedback. You'll see what's going on, etc. But. Um, um, we're going to have uh, actually consumables too in your inventory you can use to stop bleeding too, right? Yeah, do, we not, have... do you not bring any of those as well, the designer of the game? Well, see, I avoided going to town completely, so the only way I could do that was just start right into a quest without modifying my inventory. Um, nice. But, but, by the way, people love this camping screen. Like, as soon as they saw it, everybody was oh, cool. lo loving it. Oh, nice. Cool. Uh, let's, the old encourage. So, you know, you need to deal with both uh, health and stress. And uh, the guys aren't too stressed out right now. They're only, like, at about 20. But, hey, less stress is always good. Um, let's keep the stress is persistent. Sorry, stress is persistent. So if you mm -hmm. finish a dungeon and a guy's got, like, he's almost at his affliction point, you can't immediately roll him into the next mission. So that's why you're going to have to manage your stress, like, across multiple missions with these guys. Yeah. The but but you could just roll him and he'll go crazy as soon as he gets in. Yeah, you could totally do that too if if that's your style of uh, being a meanie to them. These barks are repetitive right now, but that's just their place. <laughs> we have to stop disclaimering. <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised you didn't get me to put in like uh, this is all placeholder on the screen the whole time. Because <laughs> people might take these screenshots. Oh, good. <laughs> There's nothing saying it's alpha. Yeah. Oh, well. Product night. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you uh, going to do? Uh oh, we're going in a big circle we, here. We got a. We got Dungeons a question. Are, oh, sorry. We got a Go question ahead. from a Jeff. Specifically, the Jeff doing audio on the game. Oh, can it's an tag, inside job. Can you tag more than one enemy in battle? Yes. Yes. Good. Um, oh, God. He asked it twice. Um, oh, you really want to know. I actually answered him in the chat. But it's okay. yeah. The one thing about the chat, it doesn't archive with the stream so somebody was watching uh they good point they yeah no reference to the chat um but i thought it was a good question some like yeah, your dad marking might only lasts like a uh, couple of rounds right so you have to take advantage of it while he's marked yep so yeah it'll wear off um you may have seen there that looking at the, uh, the hellion she actually has some town related quirks she is sworn off the drink um, and developed a love interest in the brothel, so uh, that is her choice of stress <laughs> relief. <laughs> she, um, she, she did that in the middle of the dungeon, though. Yeah, just, well, I mean, she... <laughs> she's like, you know what, like, you know what I could really use right now? Yeah. <laughs> she's, like, writing letters <laughs> Not home. Not up here. I don't know what this bug has perplex <laughs> perplexed me for a while, the old, the old K... That's right. okay. Short for okay. Oh, okay. Eat nothing. I have not <laughs> enough food. Um, so yeah. I hope that's what the string actually says, because if not... That would be kind of awesome. That, that's uh, Ryobux is asking about that Starcrawlers thing. I'm, I still have it. I'm not quite done. I put in a little oh. bit more work. <laughs> <laughs> the old Starcrawlers thing. The wallpaper. Right. Uh, now, one cool thing, which, well, it's cool to us and probably cool to you guys too, is... The dungeon is procedurally generated now, so that's an improvement over before also. So, like, I'm wandering around, and I don't even know where I'm going, which is cool. Um, Although yeah, this, this dungeon... is bigger than PAX East. Yeah, and this dungeon, for whatever reason, is um, is very linear. It's, but, you know. it's quite the dungeon you chose to reveal <laughs> that it's procedurally generated. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the hallway. Well, but. yeah, our, our algorithm <laughs> is when you get to make a hall to another room. <laughs> yeah, but you never know which direction the hall yeah, is going. Yeah, but we, you know, it took a long time for us to fine-tune it. Um, whoa, what happened to the occultist? He's really he's really on his last leg here. Was he bleeding in the... while he was walking? Stuff. 
Did you not heal him while we were camping? No, I guess I don't know what happened. I wasn't paying attention. He must have gotten he trapped. Stump in the face is what's gonna happen. Oh god, these guys. Um, we all about these. Okay, let's. Yeah, we're gonna. Does um guys cool to answer some questions? Yeah. Yeah. Let's get Does uh, tagging stack? Um. No, oh, I don't think so. No, because tagging right now, yeah, it's just a state. You're tagged or not. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you double tag a guy, does the tag killer do extra damage? Not not right now. Do okay, we plan to release on other platforms? Uh, I would say we plan to, yes. We have nothing we can confirm yet, but we love certain other platforms. And... <laughs> <laughs> Can't even confirm our love. It's like The yeah. Bachelor. We definitely want to bring the game as to as many places as we can. So that that being said though, it's like we're we're making a FPC Mac Linux thing. That's our first priority. You can heal quite a lot, but um, it also has a chance of making you bleed. So that happens. So he healed the grave robber, but gave her bleeding at the same time. And um, it's we have like, inventory items you can use to to stop bleeding, though, right? We do normally. <laughs> <laughs> was this was this an icon you made, Chris? And then Tyler? No, in? no, no, no. I just I always think it's funny when like I like it when Tyler gets backed into a corner because then I can say, "Oh, you're the designer of the game, isn't it your game?" <laughs> then he turns around and he's like, "Make an icon," and you're like, "Damn it!" <laughs> Ooh, look at that. So. Uh, the big guy has this... It's hard without the effect. Man, if there are only effects in the game. But the um, the big guy has this confusion spores move, which basically these spores descend on the party and then everyone gets like swapped around a little bit. So in this case, it worked out great. The Hellion ended up leaping to the front again, and that was actually pretty cool. Oh, no, I can't actually... But it could totally mess with you. Like if you had, you know, your, your Hellion, everyone's in a prime position and he does that move, you could find yourself with a bit of a problem to solve. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I can't heal myself, so let's see if I can just keep it going. But yeah, I keep giving him bleeding. <laughs> and that bleeding stacked, I think, that time, so that kind of... That was a bummer. Um, yeah, these dogs are on top of each other. I don't really know why. We'll, we'll figure that out. If you hit a two-slotted enemy, do they get hit twice? No. Uh, oh, you mean two-slot? Okay. Two no, they don't, but it might be interesting to explore if the attack normally hits two slots at the same time. Right, but you wouldn't want to get double damage just because it's a bigger monster on an attack that's only designed to hit a single rank. Yes. But if it's a double hit attack, then that could be kind of cool. Yeah, like if he's in position one and two, and you've got an attack that does damage to one and two, yeah, maybe he does. Well, I'm, I tagged that guy before, but then I, I never could get to him before he... Uh... Oh, <laughs> Okay. Oh shit! Uh -oh. Oh, death door. Awesome. Death blow. There we go. This oh, is a new mechanic. Oh, he's dead. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> oh, death shit. door. Because he, he went was, through the door. Because he was. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was bleeding. But yeah, you guys want to explain death door? You should explain death door. Tyler invented death door, and okay. didn't you implement it all by yourself too? No, no, I did not. Okay. No, I will not take credit for that. Um, but yeah, so death <laughs> death door is basically. Um, if you take enough damage to be, you know, to be reduced to zero hit points, then you're thrown. You're at death's door, and what that is is like you are now vulnerable that any further damage could be a killing blow, um, and that's that is kind of I don't know. I guess it's for a reason. Like you might be sitting there at like forty percent health, and then an enemy lands a crazy crit on you, and we thought that was kind of cheap. If you you're doing okay, and then all of a sudden you're dead. Um, Especially in fighting a boss or someone with a lot of high damage, so um, well we're just gonna keep on keeping on because we have no no firewood, and this is the most linear dungeon ever. But um, you know I'm just gonna kill these guys. Some bullshit procedural shit right there. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, okay, so then what it is is you're reduced to death door, and then it kind of gives you a chance to react, and so any further blow, regardless of how much damage, generally has a chance of killing you. So what happened there? Not the best demo ever, but is. He was reduced to death's door, then his turn came, and he happened to be bleeding, and then he bled out. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes life stacks things against you. Um, so what it gives you the chance to do is you can actually retreat um, retreat from combat. Like, 
Right now I'm going to retreat from combat, not to town, but... Oh. Uh, oh, wait. I tried to retreat. It didn't work. Yeah, I would... Well, it's not... You're not going to be able to... What about tab? Tab should hook me up, right? Uh... Oh, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, what that does is it gives you a chance to move them out of harm's way, try to heal them, uh, retreat if you want. Um, and so, yeah. And then there's different, of course, like some quirks or trinkets might affect like how you behave at death's door. Or the, like the, the Hellion, we might even put something in where she does extra damage or something like that. Yeah. Uh-oh. Now this guy finally is done with his little spores and he's... He's playing baseball. Okay. Um, let's show some other monsters. We've been in the wield for a while. Unless you want me to cruise to the boss. Do you want me to cruise to the boss? Sure. I don't think anyone wants you to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I, um, it's more of a... Nobody wants to see a cool boss monster. It's more, will the, will the artists freak out if I go to the boss? Yeah. Wait, we've seen, you've shown like us with our <laughs> pants down here basically with images yeah. with camp written across them. It can't be uh, any worse than that. So I don't go ahead. We're, we're going to win against <laughs> this boss because we are out of. But fortunately, I have the special kill everybody button. Oh, guess who? Oh. Oh. It's the gross she, guys. She's marked. Um, I'm going to kill these guys. Is that fine? And just, yeah. Uh, okay. Let's do it. Just um, obliterate them. Yeah. Wow, this is all about the onyx today. I'm gonna have to check the loot tables. It's like. It doesn't stack. Oh, it does stack. It's what stacked, the hell? We're just, we're just onyxed up. Um, okay, let me move her to the front, and move him. So you can only rearrange your party order in rooms. Halls are too sort of, you know, narrow for you to do it in. Um, so that's why, like, pausing before you make another run down a hallway is kind of a good idea to make sure you're you've got your guys in the order that you oh, want. Oh god. Yeah, it's like the just classic kill him, just kill him. I know, first well, edition D&D dungeons with the five foot wide hallway and you only have so much room to move and swing your weapon and that kind of thing. Yeah, that always puzzled me about the Space Hulk game because it's like, you're going on derelicts of human spaceships. Why didn't they just make the <laughs> always bigger? Because they were four yeah. space marines. Like, it's their own ship. Because they made the ship before they got that bulky armor. Oh, God. Is that true, or is it just... Uh, no, I don't know. I'm just... Yeah. Uh, Tyler, Tyler, you might want to hit F1 uh, to oh. show the whole map so you don't make a wrong decision and go down the wrong path to the boss. <laughs> like like I, it. Like I did? Okay. Yeah. Um, these are some I'm Ectos. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to the Ectos. Let's just uh, pretend they never happened. Ah, uh, look, look, this game's so easy. <laughs> um... While we're while we're F three in our way through, yeah. Yeah, what's up? Oh god. Um, will the occultist skills <laughs> cause him to take stress? Um, with the uh, yeah, he has oh, very shoot fires that happen. Now yeah. I've done it. Now I've done it. <laughs> oh god, sorry guys, I killed everybody. Um, uh, the, sorry, say the question again. Here? Um, it was whether the occultist skills ever cause stress. Um, they have various like backfire things, yeah. Um, yeah, like the heal can cause accidental bleed, for example. Yeah, and so I think I think one of his things does stress. Um, but it's definitely even if it doesn't, we've talked about it. It's hey, Kier. Totally yeah. The, I need four names. Four four of our participants. At uh, um, KGB. Okay. Rio Bucks, Indie Hangover, and Depression Core. All right. Um. Hey, Chris. Yo. What was that? Oh, that's the uh, that's the effect that happens when you when you kill someone. Um. Let's see. And then, what do we want to fight right now? Some ghouls or some. Um, like ectoplasms? The boss? The boss? Ectoplasms. Okay. Or whatever. Or the boss. Yeah, I could try to... Okay, I'll get to the boss. Let's do this. Uh, this uh, boss is probably going to be multiple slots. If you take two slots, do you block attacks that only hit two slots? Um, Wait, sorry, what was that? Um, if an enemy attacks. takes two slots, do they block attacks after only hit two slots? <laughs> 
I don't know if I spelled these right. I apologize if I didn't. I'm not sure about that. Yeah, you got KGB wrong. Oh, that's, Ruined it. That's I'm the KGB. Sorry. Oh, the KGB. Damn yes. it. I, that's sorry. the best name in the chat, and you messed it up. I know. We'll fix it. <laughs> we'll fix it. Well, look, we have more of a dungeon on this one. And I still I really can't, have a teleport. I still can't find the boss. Debug one. thing. Oh, there yeah, is. we do need right. a teleport debug. This is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to cruise along, but if we uh, find a good battle, like the Ectos that we haven't seen, then we'll, we'll fight them. Da, da, da. Hey, it's stop. Oh. Ow. Is this. Oh, Jesus! Ah. Sorry. Did you do that too quickly there? Yeah, we've seen enough of the giant, so we're gonna just kill him. Yeah. Oh, look, <laughs> a bandage. Sweet. The now you can stop flow. bleeding. Yes. Um, inventory, you're limited on. Ah, oh, maggots, the old maggots. You're burning through every enemy we have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can slow your roll, guy. <laughs> it's good. It shows how much stuff we have. It uh, shows almost all of how much stuff we no, have. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> we showed maggots before. I it's know. Like, it's like Tyler's making up for the camping sprites. He's like, look at all these monsters we have. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I can stop. I don't know. I got to fill an hour. This is hard to fill an hour. Okay, it's um, pretty easy to fill oh, an hour. We could do some more questions. Yeah, questions. Oh, we could. <laughs> Uh, you really crunched that giant, like, probably a long time ago. <laughs> Does the amount of overkill you inflict have a positive effect on morale? Hmm. Uh, crit, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no. well, crits, you. yeah, landing a crit has a chance of uh, reducing stress um, in your in your party, uh, those guys adjacent to you. But we don't have anything specifically for overkill. Like an overkill? No, but um, yeah. Tyler's good been... At, yeah trying for a while to think of ways of rewarding like killing blows and that kind of thing and that's kind of maybe an interesting idea some overkill uh, stress yeah maggots just made short work short work of those maggots ah oh, look are we are we planning on having like a turn order during the battle yes we're definitely yeah. going to check it out that was like oh. one of the big things coming out of packs people are like is there a way to know who's going to attack when this round and we're like no isn't that awesome but also, if we do do, uh, it's not really. <laughs> uh oh. If we did do uh, slowing skills and stuff like that, then it could affect the order while yeah, you, like, yeah. in the middle of the round, which would be good. That's kind of interesting. Well, totally interesting. Um, let's see here. Uh, does loot have tiers? Um, right yeah. now, it's just different types. Uh, because, like, the philosophy behind the trinkets that you find is that there's always sort of, like, a positive and negative trade-off, because that's kind of the whole underpinning of the game. Um, and then there's, like, cash and gems and that kind of thing, and then there's sort of the, the family heirlooms. So they're all used for different different things. Um, but there aren't tiers of gear, um, like in, in a lot of the, the sort of standard RPG kind of power ranking system. We, we got a really good dumb question that I want to ask. Shoot. Would you rather have to eat 101 pound hot dogs or eat one 100 pound hot dog? 100, 101 pound hot dogs. No Easy. way. The, the one. No, no one hot dog. Yeah, because then I can see how I'm doing. Otherwise, it's going to be like this interminable torture of like how many more hot dogs are there left. But if it's the same mass of total hot dogs. Well, then it's irrelevant. I know. You're, get, you're getting more bun, though. Well, I guess there's probably a 100-pound bun. Yeah, like, if we assume the breading is equivalent, like, the amount of total breading. But Chris brings up a good point. If you didn't see how many hot dogs you had left, that would that be That would dumb. be torturous, yeah. Like, I'm expecting a bucket of hot dogs. Oh, I was thinking some asshole would just keep handing you one hot dog after another hot dog after another hot dog until you went crazy. But see, but I, I actually see. prefer, like, I, I'd rather have three sliders than one big burger just for, well, that's enjoyable. Like to, Isn't the I'd trick also need eating a lot of hot dogs is to, to dunk them? Like, don't they dunk them and then it's easier to get them down? Oh, you couldn't dunk uh, a 100-pound hot dog. No time limit. I don't know a lot of eating shortcuts, I'll confess. I'm, I'm usually, <laughs> I, I'm not, I don't try and rip through it as quickly as all that. Yeah. This, um, this party is a bunch of killers, man. And now, and now a super serious question. When will the Lord Tier class and the Merchant be revealed? Um, I'm not for a little while. Yeah. For, I mean, uh, yeah go ahead. No, Sorry. No, didn't mean to step on you. I've talked enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like we're, we're just 
there's no real rush on that, and we want to, you know, make sure that the uh, the backer at that level gets enough time to sort of think through um, what he wants to do. And we've got more than enough characters to implement and balance, so it's it'll definitely happen. But it's a lower a lower priority thing for sure right oh, now. I gotta use the use the cheat. Where the are you going? Right. There you go, uh, Tyler. Yo. Will there be items that can be used offensively or even some that can effectively cripple or kill a specific enemy, like using a phoenix down on an undead? I didn't know you could do that. I played a lot of Final Fantasy. I didn't know you could use a phoenix down on an undead. So, sorry, the, the first question is items? The yeah, are there any offensive question? items? Um, you know, we're trying to stay away from that for the most part. Um, it Conceivably, it's something we... You know, we could add down the line, uh, but right now, actually, I think we're we're trying to make it more about the characters and less about like just go in with a whole bunch of you know bombs and health potions and you'll be set. Um, you know, that's that sort of thing. Wow, I'm just like. Yes, the other thing is too that like you're not like you're the the player is kind of the god overseer, um, so it'd be weird if like suddenly a bomb appeared out of nowhere and helped the party. Uh, I see what's happening is the darkness, of the torch is at zero, and we're getting like lots more ambushes, um, tons more loot, stuff like that. So that's why like stuff's just popping up. So we're gonna restore the torch light before we go into the battle, and uh, go ahead and eat, and we'll do a little bit of a little bit of wound care. I don't think we're really gonna have a problem with this boss just because we're in we're in better shape than we would be actually. Um, you, can, like, if you want to go in full health, there is. Nah, cheats. no, I was, yeah. hoping, I was actually trying to avoid going in full full health. Um, we got a question about the camping art. Not Shoot. that it says camp on it. Um, <laughs> is is the artwork only one sided? Yes. So it's yeah. mirrored depending on which side they're sitting on. So they're the ones that say camp and are not mirrored are the ones that Chris drew. And then if they're on the other side of the campfire, then they're mirrored to the other side. Which saves and you eventually, And eventually them. they'll be animated. Yeah, but that saves me... Um, that's like an additional 100% of work. Yeah, drawing <laughs> a second pose. And, yeah. So, for uh, every character, it's like... Yeah, I, I'd love to do it. In my mind, that's, that's what gets done, but there's just oh, so much good. stuff. <laughs> Get some. Yeah, the old... Just when you forget we have a spike trap in the game, it reminds you. All right, we're going to cruise. Oh, oh geez. That would be a big one. So, Just auto kill him. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're done. There you go. But I'm going to take the loot. <laughs> okay, this is, this is awesome because we got 10 minutes left and we're going to go okay. and fight the boss. All right. Oh, these spiders will, um, they can tag you and then do bad things to you, but I guess we'll leave that for, to discover a different time. They uh, are the one enemy that you haven't talked about here on Tyler Fights. <laughs> Uh, Gargoyle. Uh -oh. oh yeah, yeah. All right. Well, let's see. <laughs> you I got so excited to get to the boss. Now I know you, that now I know. I don't do think I, do. I want to handle them. I don't think I want to leap right up there right away. So I'm just going to try the old pick to the face. Um, let's. Well, he's a big enemy. So. Oh, unfortunately, all he was doing is marking him. So the crit really did not doesn't matter. Well, except it lowered some stress. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, it's me. All right, the KGB, I'm sorry for the name mess up, but um, let's see. Okay, this is a good example to use this. So if I do that attack, it's going to do 5 to 11, and it's going to bleed, which isn't shown on there, but I remember from looking at the tooltip. And if I select the other attack, which is Wicked Hack, oh, interesting, actually. In that case, there's not much advantage, so that's probably a tuning problem. Um, yeah, it looks like the same. So let's make him bleed. Oh. Nice. Yeah, they're all about the the killing. What's he gonna do? Now you're, Unholy now you're in trouble. So yeah, uh -huh. we're gonna mod. Oh, what did he do there? And he summoned a good. <laughs> <laughs> Inconceivable. Yeah, so, I mean, there will be effects on all that, but this guy, he's a necromancer. That's what he does. He, uh, well, I don't know whether to go for the big guy. I want to try to 
Ah. <laughs> so one thing we're really hoping to do for all our bosses is make them like little kind of problems to solve. Um, and this guy is our first kind of pass as a summoner boss. So there's some additional mechanics we're looking at layering in as well. Um, mm -hmm. But he keeps reinforcing his position with these skeleton guys. And then uh, it can get out of hand if you don't um, manage to burn them down quickly enough. Uh oh, so they're like a, the grave robber is in front, and that was kind of bad. Um, also, the bosses sometimes might have more attacks per round and things like that, so you can't necessarily count on it being just what it seems when you come in. Yeah, like the other enemies, we we try to train you up, but they obey generally a consistent set of rules. But then for bosses, we sort of bend the rules a little bit just to challenge you. Um, so you have to think about your skills and abilities in kind of new and interesting ways. Hmm. And we're we're actually in darkest dungeon sense in pretty good shape in this fight. Like usually by this time, you know, you the health might be quite a bit worse off, but you know, it's hard to say. I mean, things could go from bad to worse here in a hurry sometimes. So, oh, I forgot that's not a high damaging attack. So really, I should have tried to stun the boss on that one. Oh, get another turn. Must have she must have been at the end of that round and at the beginning of the next one. Ah, uh, yeah, you're doing way too, too well. Yeah, this is making it look easy, which uh, you should make make one of the guys go crazy. Okay, we don't have poses for it, but <laughs> yeah, there's there's oh, there's shoot. actually some good placeholder stuff in there. Oh, that one didn't summon another guy. That would have been good. You can make the occultists go crazy. Sorry, depression core. <laughs> there you go. We're making. He's a... selfish. <laughs> He's just a really good guy here. Alcoholism. Selfish. He's a selfish alcoholic. <laughs> oh god. Is oh. this uh is this boss meant for the wield or is he a ruins no. boss? Yeah, he's a ruins boss. Mm -hmm. The ruins Six. are kind of like the necromancers Ooh. have set up there and that's why there's all the skeletons and reanimated stuff. Um so that's kind of the theme of that level. Well, that didn't work out great. I tried to heal the bounty hunter, but I only did one, so that bleeding the gamble did not work out in our favor. But I'm keeping these guys under control pretty good, actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and that bounty hunter, Ryobux, is not oh, see, in shape. I know I was going to use him to heal him, but he did his own turn. Well, let's see if he can... Yeah, that's a valid... If he dies, at least we'll know he... He went out, yeah. He went out. Oh, oh there it there is, there it is. <laughs> well, bye, yep. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Still alive. What do you think, guys? Try to polish off the boss, probably. Yeah. yeah. And move your move your your bounty hunter back, or jump the the um Ugh. grave robber board, whichever you get a chance to do first. Right. I wonder. If, uh oh. Oh, you're so lucky. Damn, actually, that's a big hit. Um. Uh, bleeding is kind of a waste at this point because I think one good hit could kill him. <laughs> oh no! Now you're in trouble. Oh, oh the bounty hunter is so lucky though. Oh, dude, oh, no. <laughs> he's getting out of hand. Like you went in overpowered, and now oh, look at that! Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> selfish kill! Wow, yeah. <laughs> selfish alcoholic comes out of his stupor long enough to kill the boss. That's amazing. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, shit. <laughs> and you know what did it? The bleed was from the occultist trying to heal him. Oh, no, that's hilarious. <laughs> the, cut, the cruelest cut or whatever. Um, let's, let's see here. Well, I think we got this under control, but it is... We've paid the price now. Yeah. So when uh, you get to town... The occultist is still going to be afflicted. Depression core is still going to be afflicted, and uh, the grave robber is still going to be afflicted. So you're going to have to spend money to get them treated and reduce their their stress. So they're you know you don't really want to run with these guys again. Plus you lost again. Yeah. So now she's uh, abusive. So being uh, afflicted, I mean, is mostly bad, but there are some good things. So in this case, like she actually has an accuracy. Actually, the accuracy buff. Uh, might be from no, it's, I think it's from the affliction, and she um, she has increased I think crit right now from that too. Let's we have see. five minutes. Just 
Okay. Yeah, we're in good shape here. Yeah, we did it. You might. I don't know what's gonna happen when you open this box. No, if I open it, we'll oh, go to sh we'll go to town, and we don't want to show Hopefully. that. Yeah. So I'm gonna ignore it safely because the quest won't end as long as I ignore it. <laughs> uh, Which one? Well, let's see. I guess we got time for a few more questions. Uh, when would the community create their class? Uh, yeah, like the voting on the variant class. I think the yeah. um, the people who bought the personalized the hero. Yeah, both. Both might be watching. Yeah, I mean that's the same thing. Like, we're not yet sure if those things are going to be available for first early access. I would guess sometime during early access. Certainly no later than final release. But, um, you know, I think it's a bit advantageous for us to kind of work the kinks out of the design process on these guys, and then, then it's like we're a little better positioned to. Um... Oh no! Yeah, to brush a core. That's funny. Yeah, um, especially for the, for the personalized hero. Like we need to know what types of quirks, how they affect the gameplay so that we don't give people like a skewed list of options and then we end up with data that we can't actually plug into the game or use because our system has been adjusted as we kind mm -hmm. of play tested it. Um, Let's see if we can get in a fight to the death. Are there any non-human heroes in the game or are there any plans such as elves or dwarves? Nope. That's just kind of our universe design. It's like kind of low fantasy. If there were elves, they'd be kind of twisted and weird and we'd want to kill people. And so you'd be playing the people trying yeah. to kill them. Um, a lot of eating going on here. And then another question, is that Death's Door animation final? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. You can never disclaimer enough. Yeah. Well, I, Probably not. I don't know. Other games have blink and red guys. Well, I mean, it'll be something akin to Blinking Red, but we'll, yeah, you know, I can but it won't be exactly that. But better than yeah. that. Oh, this is cool. She looks like she's mushing. She's like, she's got her sled dogs. <laughs> <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, KGB. Uh, KGB's asking a question. Kier, do you want to answer this one? Probably uh, one at a time. time. We do. But uh, are previous explored hallways safer, or are they just straight up devoid of enemies? They oh. seem to be safer on this build. I don't know what the final plan is. Um, there's there, uh, still hunger and stuff, right? And, and an ambush? Yeah, there's chances of... Uh, it's kind of like you've, you've seen some of the fixed things, but there's still a chance of events and um, getting ambushed and stuff like that. So, and it doesn't uh, reduce the light um, as much as exploring it the first time. Oh, okay. So I would say it's like they're safer, but not safe. Uh oh well, it's looking uh, pretty dodgy here. Maybe we should en end on the question on the possibility right. that these guys get out alive. So who survived here? Depression Core and, and who else? Um, let's see here. I got so Oh shit! Indy Hangover, I think. Indy Hangover yeah, is the favorite. Okay, cool. Let's see. Oh, now we're bleeding. We're abusive and selfish, and these dogs are just doing the combo. Oh my god. Floating like butterflies, stinging like bees. Okay, we have one minute. Okay. Let's see if you can what? die in oh. a minute. Okay. <laughs> um, they're hard to hit. These dogs are evasive. Uh -oh. There you go. Oh shit, there we go. I do what I please. I do what I please. Oh, look at him. I, oh my god, what is up with this guy? <laughs> He's a killer, man. <laughs> Depression core is a beast. Yeah. Indie hangover trying to hold it together. Well... All right, and uh, he's and he's rushing to the. Well, yeah, cool. Uh, thanks, everybody. I mean, uh, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> Indie Hangover wins. Yeah, uh, retreat, retreat. Um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for tolerating the stuff that's work in progress. But we kind of wanted to show you guys some of the game instead of just some of the things that are in the game. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. Goodbye. Ciao.